Hello, gentles and lady men. My name's Spiro, and I'm not a wizard. In today's video, I'm going to go over the basics of a Hello World uh, assembly language program for the Commodore 64. Uh, now, I know a lot of these have been done. I've seen a lot of videos myself, a lot of websites that cover how to do this. Uh, but a lot of them don't do what I think is, is necessary, which is to cover a lot of the basics of why things are happening at a fundamental level um, and, and get you a better foundational understanding. Um, now, as I've stated, I'm not a wizard. I don't know a lot about the Commodore 64. Um, I've done a little bit of assembly language programming in my time. <clears throat> and and the C64 is quite an interesting beast in that there are different character sets uh, the that display characters differently you got you know at the first the first time you load up your Commodore 64 um, everything is an uppercase um, you know lowercase, is basically non-existent outwardly um, but you've got a, the ability to change into these multiple different um, so if we go print but if we hold down shift and we type the exact same word we get what has been called the Petsky graphics um, so Petsky is or was a Commodore's version of ASCII. Um, and, and this has allowed people to do some interesting things. People can create text-based graphics using these characters. Um, but it's important to know how the stuff gets displayed to the screen. Um, I, I'm only going to do this in basic text mode. I'm not, you know, we're going to start here. This is not a fancy graphic demo, but if you're printing stuff to the screen, um, which might be the equivalent of saying print hello, you, you, but with assembly, um, there's, there's a little bit to know, there's a little bit of background, and there's a, there's a couple of interesting things that, that I'll show of how, um, the the Petsky text graphics works in in different ways and we'll we'll get to that. So the first thing I'm going to do is is I'm not going to load a proper assembler. We're going to do this very simply with uh, an assembly machine la machine language monitor um, MLM. That's not multi level marketing. The the one that I'm using is called Super Snapshot. So because I am in a cartridge, uh, because I'm in a an emulator, I'm using a, a cartridge. So if I hit F12 and Vice, um, I, I have the cartridge here. So if I reset, the first thing you see is Super Snapshot. We can hit F7. And that takes us back to the Commodore Basic. Uh, the difference here being, as you can see, Turbo V5. Um, if I hit F12 again, if you've got a physical one, there'll be a, there'll be a freeze button on it. Um, but on on the emulator, we go hit cartridge, hit cartridge freeze, press return on that, press escape. That takes us to another menu. We can take a shortcut. Uh, but there is that you can press M to go directly to the the machine language monitor, uh, or we can go number five, and you've got the ML monitor here. So we go number one, and now we're in the machine language monitor. So this allows us to do some basic things with memory. What we're looking at here is we've got a program counter, which is how the CPU knows where the next instruction is going 
to be like when it when it's told to execute another instruction it's going to go to that address every time it executes an instruction it will increment that to where the next instruction is going to be some instructions might only be uh, one byte uh, if you're doing a, a number increment, for example, if you're incrementing a register, the command uh, INX to increment the X register is only a single byte. Uh, if you do a, a jump command uh, and you're jumping forward a couple of bytes in memory, the command will only be stored as two bytes. Uh, if you're jumping to backwards for example uh, the assembler will store uh, three bytes so you have one byte for the command and two bytes for the memory address that it's going to jump to so every time you execute a command it'll know whether it's going to increase that by uh, one two or three bytes sr is the status register that keeps a bunch of flags we're not going to go into that now um, the, the, they are used for the, the, we will be using one of those flags um, today which will be the zero flag so whenever you do uh, certain instructions whether they're, they're maths instructions whether they're incrementing uh, register instructions um, or in some cases loading numbers into registers uh, the zero flag will be set so what it will mean is if you load the number zero into a register then if that number is zero the zero flag will be set if you load the number one into a register the zero flag will be unset um, any other number that's not a zero the zero flag will be unset if you do an add or a subtract and the result is zero the zero flag will be set uh, and it is set um, and we can and, and we can use that to do comparisons to do jumps and to 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 figure out where we're going to go in our code we'll get to that a bit later um, so we've got the a register also known as the accumulator we've only got three registers on the cpu which is quite low um, the accumulator is the only one we can do maths functions in like adding and subtracting the x and the y registers are known as index registers and they're basically just storing, they're used for storing numbers, counters, uh, temporary number storage, things like that. Uh, if you wanted to, for example, add two numbers together, you might load one of them into the X register, one of them into the A register, and then the add command will work on the A register. Uh, yeah. Again, that, that's the basics of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run us through printing some text to the screen. Um, as I said, I'm using Super Snapshot. So if we go here, I'll leave links in the description box below. Uh, but there's a website called uh, pokefinder.org. So rr.pokefinder.org slash wiki slash super snapshot oops that will give you the this wiki page and down 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 below will be links to the binaries there's a section called binaries so this is just the cartridges uh, but what i do recommend is getting the full which has got the manuals and the manual the operating manual is quite useful. Uh, I've got, is this the operating manual addendum? 
Oh, I haven't got my OBS set up to load that. Uh, but you can use that to to look at the commands. The main commands we're going to look at today are A for assemble, D for disassemble, and M for memory dump. Um, what we want to first off is we're going to decide where we're going to put our code. Uh, address um, a, a good place for us to start is address 1000 hex. So we're going to disassemble hex 1000. Um, I don't want to fill the whole screen, so I'm going to go to 100F. So what this is going to do is this is going to disassemble whatever is in memory starting at address 1000, well 1000 because it's hex, and ending at hex 100F. Hit return. <coughs> So that gives us, there's a whole lot of nothing data in this at the moment. Literally a byte, uh, a zero and FF bytes. So it's nothing. So with uh, Super Snapshot Monitor, we can go up. If you're using a different monitor, have a look at the instructions and see, as I said, what, we, what, we, what we're looking to do is we want to assemble instructions into memory we want to be able to disassemble or dump the memory contents of to look at the code we're entering and we want to do a memory dump so a memory dump now to get out of this because of with super snapshot if you scroll down to the bottom of the screen you keep hitting arrow it'll just keep loading more memory addresses conversely if you go up it'll go ah oh, i'm going to cycle up through memory so the two ways of getting around that are pressing escape and hitting enter a couple of times or we can go clear home so on my computer here with vice i press shift home that clears the screen and goes to the top so we can dump that again uh, one oh oh if so I'm gonna go up here and go a so the the a command works by by the 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 command which is a and then we're going to say at memory address and it uses hex by default I don't know if it actually does decimal I don't know enough about it so we're just going to say it uses it knows that if you type in 1000 it is a hex address um, when you're disassembling, it'll it'll give you the the hex numbers, and on the right hand side, what we call the opcodes. So this is the human readable versions of the CPU instructions, but these are the hexadecimal number representation of those instructions. Um, so when we're using the assemble command, we if you're going over instructions, you want to wipe out the space over that middle column. Uh, what we want to do first off, so what, what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to have a string of text. We're going to cycle through it, one character at a time. So we want to have a counter to keep count of the characters. Uh, and we want to put the character onto the screen and so we want to also be able to use that counter to control what screen address we're going to put the character on so we can we can use one counter to do both in in, in this screen mode so what we want to do is first of all we want to now, if you remember, I said we had three registers. We have the A register, which is the accumulator, 
and we have the X and the Y registers, which are index registers, which we use for storing numbers and are good for keeping counters. Um, so we're going to use the X register in this case as our counter. That's where we're going to keep our number that we're going to count up. So we're going to LDX is the the opcode or the instruction. So it is LD load X, the X register, with a number. Now this is this is so that it know the the the, the hash um, is so that the assembler knows that we are going to load a value an actual number not a memory address uh, an assembler is all about working with memory addresses and numbers that's that's literally all the computer does um, so to tell it that we're going to load the number zero instead of whatever is at memory address zero uh, that's hex zero we're going to just space over that so we've said at we're going to assemble in memory location 1000 load the X register with the number 0 okay now we hit enter on that and that has assembled it and it is and it has given us the hex representations of that so a2 is the internal CPU hex representation of the LDX command that specifically the LDX command with direct addressing um, that's out of the scope for this video but you might see a command that is LDX that is A2 but you might see a command that is also says LDX but that number is different if that number is different it is probably referencing a memory location not a direct right so the 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 cpus are very simple um it knows that if you give it one command there's only one way it can deal with the data that it is given so the i can show a if i do an ldx let's get rid of the a2 so remember ldx with direct addressing is A2. If we get rid of that dollar, uh, get rid of the hash, and we just load, now we're telling it to say load whatever is at memory address zero. See, the command has changed. The text looks the same. The command, you know, the instruction looks the same, but it's now using a different internal CPU command represented by a6 so it is going to deal with the data we give it differently than if it was a2 so let us just wipe that back so i'll press insert add my hash again and we go back to being a direct load so We've now loaded our counter with zero. So that's the beginning. We know that this is this is basically going to be treated as a memory offset. So we're starting with a zero offset. So as that counter increase, so so we're going to put a message in, and the we're going to refer to that message by its memory address. So the first character we want to get. We want it to be at that memory address, not any others. Otherwise, it'll grab the wrong character. We want to cycle through, display that character on screen. We want to increment our counter by one. And then that will do uh, when we grab the next character. It'll basically say, OK, well, I'm going to grab the memory address and an offset of one so it'll grab the second character um, so we want to load our character that we the first character 
that we're going to type is we're going to use the load a for load into accumulator um, and what we're going to do is I'm going to say I want to load whatever is at a certain memory address with my offset so because we're loading a memory address not an actual number we're not going to use that hash we're just going to say dollar sign and reference the memory address directly I'll just pick something where I know is going to be out of the range of our code so I'll go 1030 okay so you'll see that that'll be I'll, I'll, I'll add the message in later and I'll add it in at address 1030 so then we want to say with an offset of X so comma X that's not very clear based on the characters that are on the screen but that is LDA dollar sign 1030 comma X so we're saying we're going to load whatever is in the memory address of 1030 plus whatever our offset is so we hit return on that so that has told us BD is the LDA instruction for loading from memory now we've got here so we'll notice that we put 1030 and it gets stored as 3010 so the 6502 slash 6510 CPUs are little endian which means the small end of the number gets stored first the big Indian computers store the big part of the number first so the, the, the part of the reason for that in these 8-bit CPUs is because every time the CPU has to jump over memory locations is costly so for the most part people are going to be changing the lower part the lower byte more frequently so it's faster for the CPU to go just go this memory address that memory address this memory address that memory address if it was big Indian it would have to say I'm gonna when if, if it's referring to something that is only incrementing by one each time it's gonna have to jump over two memory locations two bytes that doesn't sound expensive for our modern computers because they've got um, a lot more processing power and they can do things much much faster uh, but in these days where we're talking only one or two megahertz computers as opposed to gigahertz we we want to run as fast as possible so we've 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 stored the number in this format so that looks confusing at first but it is the number 1030 matches that address so what have we got so far we've loaded our counter with zero we've loaded our a register with the contents of this memory address and so now what we want to do is the way I'm going to store the message is I'm going to have the text and then at the end of it I'm going to have a zero byte so I'm going to have the the the, the byte the memory address following the text is I'm going to put a zero into it so that way the code knows when the message has ended uh, otherwise we would have had to count the number of characters of our message and compare that number and and that's fine if you're just doing a demo where you're literally only printing one string but for, for, the, for to me I believe it's more useful for you to know that in, in, in a in a much larger program 
you're going to want to print a message that may be variable in length or you want to have a print routine that you can call uh, multiple times for different messages right or even if you're just going through your code later you change your message it happens to have a different number of characters you don't want to go back to every time you called that code uh, or called up that that memory address in the code and have to change your counter so what we're going to do is we're going to say at the end of a string we're going to have a zero byte and that will indicate to the program that this the the, the string of text has finished and we can we can stop printing things on the screen so we want to check for that zero byte before we print to the screen because if we print a zero byte to the screen uh, things may not be this the outcome that we want so the f after loading that character we're now going to compare it to zero so now if you remember back to the beginning i was saying that the LDA command is one of the commands that sets the zero flag if appropriate. So if it loaded the H, the zero would not the zero flag would not be set because the H character does not equal zero. Um, if we loaded the character E from Hello World that would not be zero so the zero flag would not be set when it gets to the end of our message and it sees a byte that is zero it will load that and the zero flag will be set because that command sets the zero flag so what we want to do is we want to go branch if equal so that means we're going to branch so the branch command the the checking for equality uh, checks for the zero flag is it set is it so uh, so it's basically going to say branch if the last command was equal to zero right so we're going to want to jump somewhere down here because that'll be what what we're saying is if it's zero in our program uh, we don't need to do anymore we don't need to read anything else because literally our program is just printing hello world and then quitting so we'll jump down to and we might have to edit this address let's say 100f for now okay we'll just space over that so we'll come back and update that if we need to so we load our index register with our counter we load the first character from our message address mm -hmm. and if that happens to be a zero then we'll quit right because we'll jump to our end address so if it's not zero we want to print it to the screen what the, we want to print the character we just loaded onto the screen so now what we're going to do is we're going to store a so store whatever is in the accumulator to memory address 0400 with an offset of x okay now I'll explain that so on the Commodore 64 we go here we've got um, this, this this c64 wiki is a fantastic resource so we can look here and 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 uh, th there's, there's there's a bunch of memory allocated on the Commodore 64 to certain things so starting at address hex 0400 or 1024 in decimal is where the screen memory is so if we ignore the border on the Commodore 64 screen that top left character that byte 
is screen address 0400. What is a space here on our screen is 0401. This is 0402 and so on. The Commodore 64's text screen is 40 characters wide but because we've uh, uh, because we've started with a zero um, number, uh, it is going to be so 1024 in decimal plus 39, and that'll give us the address of that last character. Um, and then the very next address, increment it by one more, and it wraps around to this line. Then there's another 40 bytes, and then the next byte wraps around to the next line. So 0400 is that top left character. So we're going to use our offset, because that's going to count our message. And it's also going to match up with what position, what column on the screen we're going to print our message on. If our message was more than 40 characters, this would just loop it down onto the next line. All right, so it would just keep printing, keep printing, keep printing. Um, so we've got that. We've got our counter. We've loaded our character. We've checked if it's a zero. If it's not, we keep going and display it on the screen. So now what we want to do is we want to Increment our counter by 1, so we'll say INX, which is increment the X register, and that's all we need to do, uh, and that's a single byte command. So when it gets to here, X register is now going to be 0, 1, which means that when we load something, it's going to load at 1031 and when it stores it on the screen it's going to be at 0401 all right so that what have we got loads the screen character checks for zero stores it increments the number and then we want to go back to the start we don't want to go back to the start to the top line because then that'll just reset our counter so we want to go back to this line here now if we were writing this in an assembler we would have a label here before this command and we might call it loop and so we would go jump to loop but because we're working with memory addresses we'll treat these memory addresses as our labels all right so what we want to do is we want to jump back to this load a command to get the next character in our message and that is at address 1002 so if we say dollar 1002 space over those extra characters we don't want and that's our main code so it'll keep cycling through until it gets to uh, until it re uh, reads in a zero and then it will branch out so I've gone here branch f equals to 100f it's actually 100e is going to be the where the the exit is going to be so th this is the loop after the loop is address 100e so we're going to have the rts command so it will return from subroutine we could also use the break command for it to be a, 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 harsher, a harsher exit but because we're going to be running this through basic um, as in we're going to go back to the main Commodore basic screen to execute this program we want that to exit cleaner so we're going to use the RTS command not the break command so I'll press return on that 
So that has put our exit code and at address 100E. So if we just use our arrow keys, now because well, what we want to do is we want to now change this branch address to 100E. Uh, so we'll go back here and wipe that those codes out. So we're now saying, again, like we've gone through as it would normally, at address, so assemble at address 1005, this new command. So we've pressed return on that now, and it updates that. So it has actually got a branch 07, so it's actually going to jump forward 7 bytes. So let me just do a shift home to clear the screen. And we can look at our code again. 1000 to 100 E, because we know that that is our last address. Okay. Um, that is our complete program. So now we've got to set up our message. So we're going to, we've decided we're going to put that in memory address 1030. So if I do a memory dump of 1030 to 1040, that'll give us all that. So we've got eight bytes on a row. So at that address is actually a zero now. So if we left that as is, the first time it loops through, it would quit and it wouldn't print anything on the screen. So what we want to do is now what the the, the M command dumps what is on the screen, but it dumps it in an interesting format. So the colon command is actually a command that updates those memory locations. So we can just use our arrow keys with, with that M command and just update those bytes manually. So what we want to do is to note, so we can't just type in, it's unfortunate that this may, if you've got a, um, a, a, a monitor that allows you to edit them on the, the uh, Petsky output version of those bytes, then then that would be a lot easier for you. Uh, this is a bit more tedious. So what we have to do is we have to find the um, the the hex codes for what we're going to print on the screen. So uh, this here, there's a website called slark.me. I'll leave again. I'll leave links to this down below. Um, this website is kind of cool. He's got these uh, PDFs, which I which I constantly use, I've got a printout of this C64 Petsky um, PDF file. It's quite good. It also gives you uh, the th this is useful if, if writing in basic um, and you're doing print commands. You can say Shift Clear, and it'll print this character and basic will know to treat that as a clear screen. Um, th this is really useful. So what we're going to do now is we see here the screen code starting at 01 is the letter A. So what we want to do is we're going to print hello world. This is, I'll get into this a little bit later on, but the Commodore 64 has different character sets. Um, so this one is basically upper and lowercase characters. And there are other character sets which uh, have got the uppercase characters and those funny Petsky graphics. Um, in this case, I'll show, I'll, I'll, I'm going to show you the difference but we're going to start with these versions of the characters. So what we want is we want to print the H first. So we're going to go hex 08. 
So we're going to go 0, 8. We're going to uh, move across here, so we want to print the E, so that'll be 0, 5. Uh, L is 0, C. We want a couple of those. The O is 0, F. And then we want a space. So this carries over, so it goes down this column and carries the arm up there. So character 2, 0 in hex is a space. So I'm going to put 2, 0 in there. So we've got H, E, L, L, O, space. And we're going to start with world, which is hex 1, 7. And then we want an O which is 0F. Now, we've run out of our bytes. We've got 8 bytes, 8 characters so far. So we're going to hit Enter to, to lock that in. All right? It hasn't updated this yet, but we'll get to that in a minute. So we've got Hello Space WO. So now in this address, we want the R. So it's 1, 2. Press across to there. Uh, what I say? Well, that's the R, so we want the L, 0C. Oops, that's... Oh, bugger, C. And we want a D, which is 0, 4. Now, I'm going to put a full stop at the end of it. 2E. Right? So the next byte is where we want to put our zero so that the program knows that that's the end of our string so i'm going to put that as a zero zero okay so we've got here h e l l o space w o r l d full stop zero byte i press return on that so i can just do up arrow and press return back on this line and it updates with this. Now, because of the difference in um, character sets, this looks like it is reversed characters. <coughs> we'll ignore that for now. Uh, that is just because the monitor has put this into a different screen mode or is displaying these characters differently to how we're going to display them in basic we don't need to know that right now so if i just go down arrow so we've now got our code it is at memory address hex 1000 and our data which is our message in hex address 1030 now we're going to go back into basic and call that memory address but because BASIC only works with uh, decimal numbers, not hexadecimal, what we want to do is we want to say what is the... Uh, so, so this monitor has the ability to convert numbers between hex and decimal. Uh, there are other monitors that, that will also give you binary. Um, some do BASIC arithmetic as well. But on uh, Super Snapshot, the hash character followed by a hex number. So you, we don't need to specify the dollar sign. So we want to know what the decimal of our memory address of our code is. And that's telling us that in hex that's 1000 and in decimal it's 4096. All right, so we'll remember that number, 4096, that's going to be our our call address so we'll go x to exit back to basic uh, seven to resume so we are going back into basic so now what we can do is we use the basic command sys and the memory address where our code is is four zero nine six so what are we expecting to see we're expecting to see the string hello world printed at the top left of the screen and then the code will exit see if that works bam we have it has printed it at the right place 
and it has printed the full stop and then as soon as it got to that next character it stopped, exited the program and the Commodore 64 is ready for your next command. So we're going to go back into the monitor and with this I go F12 cartridge cartridge freeze press escape and then I'll press M for which is the shortcut to go directly to the monitor and we can dump our code uh, on o -O F and so we have our code here now we oops 1030 to 1040 is our message I was going to press escape and enter a couple of times to get out of that so I was telling you about those different memory codes the mem sorry the different uh, character codes uh, there is another way of writing to the screen um, and that is by using a kernel ROM routine let me just check how far through am I we've done 46 minutes I wonder if I should make that a follow-up video um, I might do that so this this is part one we've managed to write to the screen um, if we were to use different characters over here so we've got another set of letters starting at 4-1 another set of characters starting at 6-1 um, if we just quickly update some of these so let's go handily it's uh, 40 hex above so if we go 48 45 4c 4c 4f um, and I'll leave I'll leave the world as is funny that yeah I am gonna leave the world as is so we're now using a different set of characters we'll go exit uh, we will go resume and we will go sys4096 we should see the hello in an odd character set and world in normal so there we go we can switch between the character sets on the Commodore by either pressing uh, shift Commodore and as you can see we've gone into the low, lower case and uppercase character set so now that for uh, those show the these characters so so the four one four two four three are the uppercase here and the other ones have switched to character set two which is that second one lowercase so that's just an interesting feature of if we go shift commodore again it takes us into the other character set uh, so in the follow-up video i'll show you another way of printing to the screen which uses different characters stay tuned